Hey everybody, just wanted to do a quick walkthrough. Wanted to go ahead and show you how to hitch up real fast. We're gonna go ahead and drop this coupler over the ball. It's just nice and easy, crank it down. Once you get over the ball, you're gonna to wanna to slip this lock on. You're gonna push it, your car, you can push against the trailer and just slip this guy on. And that's how we lock on. Now, there's also a locking pin that clips to a little lock. We always want you to have that latched on here. We also encourage you, if you are gonna leave the trailer, that this pin be in place to keep it safe and secure from being stolen. I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to hit, hitch up the chains. For those of you who haven't done that before, you always wanna make sure that they're, they cross. This one is gonna go all the way across and clip on. This one's gonna go all the way on the other side and slip on as well. Again, make sure that these are across at some point in time. It's against the law in Utah to let these chains drag. Um, these, this right here is your emergency brake connect system. We always just loop it through one of the holes and carabiner on the other side. This will pull a pin and tell the brakes to hit stop, just in case the trailer ever does come disconnected. This is your, back, your brake light system. Depending on how, your, your vehicle, you might wanna just have it all the way out. For us, we have to wrap it around this once, just to make sure it doesn't drag on the ground. And this is your seven pin connection. And this clips in like that. This also latches on and keeps that from coming disconnected while you're driving. Hey everybody, just wanted to show you how to stand up the pop-up. This little st stairs case pops out. And then the first thing to do is you unlatch the far side and the same thing on this side. And once this pops up, it's actually assisted. It's got springs to make this light and easy for you to use. For those of you who are a little shorter, you can pull this pin and use this bracket to lift up the camper. And you can just push this up high and put it in that notch at the very top. Swing that across. And there's a little notch right up in there where that will brace itself on each other. And then what you can do is open up the door here, swing this open. I like to step inside, leaving this straight and lift the first triangle. Once you've got it lifted, there's two latches on each side that lock into place and secure the, the wall. Follow me, let's do the other side. And then this side will push up. And just like on the other side, you've got two latches that close on each side. Let's go ahead and turn this guy on. We've got a special key this allows you to disconnect the battery at any time. It just goes in and twists. Once that's on, you're gonna to wanna to turn the gas off. Come on in, let's go ahead and talk about it. And the light right here, if you wanna turn this light on, give you guys some visibility, lets you do a few more things. We've got a three-way refrigerator. This does electric and propane. Up is off, down is on. This little gauge tells you where the battery is. Right now we're at 71% battery life. It's still, you know, 12 to 15 hours. This is a 12 volt battery, and you can watch this gauge. This one is your temperature. This is your standard thermostat. You can adjust it up and down, turn it on and off. This controls the heater, which is right next to it. This heater is a 16,000 BTU heater. This will get nice and toasty, winter or, or at night. These are your electric outlets, USB. Anytime that this light is illuminated, it means that this is a GFI and needs to be reset. Inside the trash can, we've also got a handful of cleaning supplies and a water and dry mat, anything you might need. This is a gooseneck faucet. Forward is hot, back is cold, and then blended. When it's time to leave, we actually ask that you remove this handle and you fold the neck down. And when you get here, just go ahead and pop that back up and let it rotate and toss the little handle back on. Unfortunately, this handle is too tall 
and will break if you don't take this off. This is a very important part of tear, setting up or taking down. Um, this right here is the queen size mattress. It allows you to use it as a seating area. You can also pull this out and make it into a bed. The first step you'll need to do is fold this back pillow, push it back, and as you can see, it's a tight fit. So make a little teepee and push it down so it's nice and flat and you're able to toss a sheet and blankets and pillows and this is a really comfortable seven and a half inch memory foam mattress. On the other side, we've got this dinette, right? You're able to sit in here. This table puts together pretty easily. But what I'd like to show you really quickly is how the bed sets up. So we'll get this out of the way, just pops off. We just set it down on the ground like this. And then we go ahead and use these boards to make the bed. There's six of them. And you're gonna wanna just evenly space these out. And there shouldn't really be too much of a gap. They go together nice and easy. And now you just pull the these mattresses down and just like on the other side, it's a nice tight fit, so you'll need to push them down in, and that's the next bed. These are curtains that go up, go down, and then I'd like to go ahead and show you on this other side. Down here we've got some good storage, we've got all your utensils, we've got knives, silverware, cutting boards, aluminum foil if you might have forgotten it. Even on this side, we have pots, pans. We've got paper towel roll, mixing bowls, plates, cups. Again, anything to try to help your camping experience be better. This is our head fan. You can actually open this fan up and it will lift the lid. And then you can just kick it on by turning it left or right. There's two buttons. One is out, one is in, depending on if you want to get air out or in of, in of the camper. Very easy to use. Um, I want to just go ahead and show you guys how we break down the camper. Um, one of the most important things is we always turn off the lights. In fact, turn the lights off early because these can't be hot. They'll burn the cushions. So make sure that these have had a chance to cool down. Um, we're going to go ahead and close these, open up these um, locks. As you notice, we have decorations. They've all been Velcroed. You don't have to worry about even taking those out. This will open up and it just falls and gently sets on the counter. And then there's two more locks on each side. Don't, don't forget, we want to always make sure that this door is split so the door, these will lock. And then there's two handles on each other side and we're going to go make sure the door is split and then you can do the same thing. You can just reach across here and unlock each latch and then slowly let this down. Nice and careful. Once that's been done, you can step out of the camper and set this down. And I'm tall enough, I'm able to push with my hands, but other people are not. So we've got these little handles that you, you can use. For those of you who are a little shorter, there's these arms that can help you. You can just push this up with one hand and let this one down. And it'll slowly slide together. Make sure the door's put away. Nice and tight, latched in, and then it just closes down. These are wind bracers. They can just lock in pins, slip together, making this a nice snug fit, keeping the arm secure. To latch this, you're gonna just leave this unlocked, push it down, and pull it up. Let's go ahead and do a walk around, talk through the technicality of this, this trailer here. Right here you've got two 20 gallon propane tanks and a 24 deep cell battery. This battery is activated with the pin as I mentioned earlier. It's got a little um, strap on here. If you run into any issues, it's a good idea to pop this open and make sure the battery hasn't come disconnected. Um, this is also a quick disconnect pin. Just cl clips in here and locks. If you're looking for this guy, he's gonna go ahead and be right inside this box. This is a just storage compartment where we've got most of the things you might need to maintain this unit. 
we've got this um, ratchet, but this is where this guy's gonna be. I actually leave one or two inside the unit just in case one gets lost. Um, this is your AC unit. This is manually controlled just on and off. Typically it needs to be hooked up to a power source. The battery is not strong enough to power this unit. Um, follow me, let's talk about the generator. If you have decided to rent our, our inverter, we've got this Ryobi unit. It's 1800 watts running power, super easy to start. All you do is move it to a cold start position and pull three to five times and then move it to run. And if we want to turn it off, just push it to red, kill the unit. Please be sure that if you're ever using this unit that it is tethered to something. The black, the little black key is what goes and locks this unit up. Unfortunately, this is not an inexpensive unit. We want to make sure that it comes home every time you guys goes out. We've got the 30 amp cable that goes to a 15 amp um, adapter. Follow, that just plugs into one of the two spare parts. The reason why we like this unit is you can plug in devices like your cell phone and other things using USB without the risk of damaging your devices. Follow me, I'll show you where we plug it in. Oh, I forgot. This unit comes equipped with a backup camera. You're gonna plug your backup camera in um, a cigarette lighter and that will power the backup camera when parked, put in reverse. These two connections are pretty basic. This is for your city water. So if you have access to uh, running water inside your campsite, this is where you'll hook that up. This is where you fill up the tank. We've got 12 gallons of cold water and eight gallons of hot water. This is where we, you manage and use your hot water. This is the little heater. This system runs on propane. The little lighter back here will kick on and you'll hear it tick, 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 and turn on when you push the water heater button inside the camper. This is your 30 amp connection. This guy needs to be twisted on. When you're done, use, when you're done using it, go ahead and take it off. Remember that this does not go on straight. You have to twist it 15 degrees to the left and pull it off. Remember, that's the same way when you go on. You can't go straight, you have to go in like this and twist it to lock in place. This is the heater. Don't touch this when hot. This will burn you. This gets really, really toasty. Um, remember that when you're using water inside the camper, you need to put one of the buckets here to capture the water. This is gray water and should not be thrown out. It should be disposed of appropriately. There, this is where you start and use your, um, your refrigerator. You have two methods, again, propane and gas. One's a green light and one is a red light. That red light is for electricity, green is for gas. I wanted to show you how to go ahead and turn on the refrigerator. First, you, remove, you twist these open and pull these out and this will pop off, this panel will pop off. Inside you've got two ways to, to essentially use the refrigerator. Red is electricity, which is gonna use your 12 volt battery. Typically they're not the most efficient way. Actually gas is far better. So what you do is you kick it on with this green button, push down on this knob, knob twist it to a medium or high, and then spark the heater by igniting it with this red button. This will actually turn the gas on, creating the refrigerator to kick on. When you're done, please turn it all the way to off and then push the green button to disengage the refrigerator and propane. Wanted to show you really quickly how this works. This is the external shower. You're gonna need the key to open this up. This has just been coiled for your convenience. You've got your cold and your hot blend, and it's easy as one, two, three. Remember to always turn this off. It's clockwise, so always turn it off and go ahead and put this back when you're done. It's important to remember to lock this up so when you're driving down the road, it doesn't disconnect. Again, wanted to show you how the solar works. This unit comes solar ready. It's got this little two-pronged solar, solar port. This is a standard solar port. We 
have equipped you guys with a solar panel. Um, this is free of charge. We always want you guys to feel like you have access to power. This pop guy pops open. And on here you have a two prong solar panel. Typically we just lean it up against the camper, give it a chance to get some sun. All of the cables and connections are inside the back of this unit. Pretty basic. You plug it into the controller and the controller then goes to the solar port. To show you again how to set this the trailer up, these, these are stabilizers. They're on all four corners of the unit. Uh, we always encourage you to make sure that the trailer is popped up and secure before disconnecting it from the coupler or putting down the, the, the stabilizers. Just like any stabilizer, this just latches on and you can ratchet it all the way down. These units are rated up to 1,500 pounds on each side, which is pretty much the weight of the entire trailer. I'd encourage you not to put all of the weight on one leg. Always make sure that all four legs are touching before you put any significant weight or have multiple people inside the camper. Thanks again for renting through Outdoorsy. We're excited to have you. Um, if any questions come up, feel free to call or text me, but this should be a nice little reference guide.